Good. Um, question seven, trigonometry still, and uh, here we are. Cool. Okay. Getting full Sweden. Um, sine squared x minus cos squared x over one minus sine squared x. You've got to show that it's equal to tan squared x minus one. Right. Quite an important way about how we deal with this kind of thing. It's not very normal to see it with C2. But what you need to do is you need to pick a side of this equation and do some stuff to it and end up with it looking like the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the left-hand side. And I'm going to work on the left-hand side. And see what I can do with it. And I'm going to end up with it looking like the right-hand side, hopefully. Um, sine squared x minus cos squared x. Well, there's not an awful lot I can do with that. I, I know about sine squared x plus cos squared x. 1 minus sine squared x. Well, I do know that if I've got, if I've got this identity, if I know that that's true, then I can rearrange that however I want. So I could say that cos squared x is always 1 minus sine squared x. So when I see this 1 minus sine squared x here, I know that that's the same as cos squared x. So let's work with that. That means that that bottom line is the same as cos squared x. And now I've got a fraction, two parts I'm subtracting in it, and it's over a common denominator. So I can split it up. So I can write it being sine squared x over cos squared x minus cos squared x over cos squared x. And I, I know, as well as knowing that one there, I also know, don't I, that sine x over cos x is always equal to tan x. Well, if sine x over cos x is tan x, if you square all of that, you've got sine squared over cos squared. It must be the same as tan squared. And cos squared divided by cos squared, well, they're the same thing, so that must be equal to 1. And wasn't that what I was aiming for? So I'll show tan minus, what, tan squared x minus 1. Tan squared x minus 1. That's good, x minus 1. So I'll show them where you get the minus 1 from on this bit. Cos squared divided by cos squared. Oh, it's 1. It's and one. Then that equals tan squared and x. That equals tan squared x. So, so why minus 1? It's, it's 1. So why not plus 1? Because it's minus. It's oh, tan squared x. So you won't be able to, minus oh, yeah. you won't be able to cancel them who cos squared x is out. Yeah, well, you, yeah but you, if you cancel them out, you'd be left with 1. OK. Shh. Then it said. Hence, solve the equation. So how can we use this to solve that? Well, part one of this led us to know that that left-hand side there is the same as tan squared x minus 1. So for part two, actually part two wants us to work with, instead of that, that lot is tan squared x minus 1. So we're doing tan squared x minus 1 equals... 5 minus 10x. And I saved a bit of time by not writing out the full thing there. But that, is that okay? So that's using part 1. That expression there is the same as 10 squared x minus 1. And we've now got it equal to 5 minus 10x. And this isn't an identity anymore. This isn't always true. We've got to find the particular values of x for which it works. This morning, one of the topics that we did in part call one was about stealth quadratics, things that are a quadratic equation but don't immediately look like it. And we had to look for the biggest power of the unknown was twice the other power of the unknown, tan squared x and tan x. If we rearrange this slightly, we've got tan squared x plus tan x minus 6 equals zero. 
this is a quadratic in terms of 10x. I'm going to say that I'm going to let t be equal to 10x. t squared plus t minus 6 is 0. Um, does that factorise? Yeah, t minus, two, t, minus t minus 2, t plus 3, mm -hmm. pretty good. <laughs> Which gives us two values of t from that, either t equals 2, well t was 10x. So we go straight to writing that, 10x equals 2, or 10x is minus 3. I've still got a way to go with this. What? Because I'm supposed to be finding out what x is. How do we, let's work at them separately. How do we deal with 10x equals 2? Inverse time. We do inverse tan. So on the calculator we're now going to do inverse tan of 2. Uh, careful with this. Two minutes ago, the calculator was set in radians mode to deal with that question about arc length and area of perception and all that stuff. This, we're looking for an angle in degrees. And so, if you've just had your calculator set in radians, we now need to quickly turn it back so it's set in degrees, so that we can do inverse 10 of 2, and get x is 63.43 degrees. Again, there's going to be some slight differences in how you've done this before. I use the CAS diagram. I'm not sure that everybody does, but, but if you want to then solve this the way that I do this, is to say we're dealing with tan and it's positive, so it's going to be in the bits where tan is positive, which is there, and down there. And it's 63.43 degrees, so I'm going to mark my angle in there and there, because it's the angle it makes with the horizontal line. And so my values that I want, 63.43, and the other one would be 180 plus that. So 243.43. I'm going to end up giving my answer probably to one decimal place. We'll check what the question said. How does the cast diagram work? We have really that. Okay. Um, if you've if you've done this by the graph and using symmetry, then stick with the way that you. I don't understand that. People always talk about this graph this way being best. Okay. Um, it's that each of these. You know when I drew the graphs a moment ago. Yeah. And we said that in each of the quadrants, in each of the 90 degrees, different ones of them are positive and the others are negative. Yeah. Well, in, this tells you which one is positive in each quadrant. And so when we've got tan and it's positive, we draw it in the two quadrants where tan is <coughs> positive. And you always draw your angle against the horizontal line. And then you're measuring as you go around anti-clockwise from the zero line. And so we come to 63.43, and we keep going, and we come to 180 plus 63.43. So how, how do you know which one's possible in which place? Like, what does C, A, S, T? A for all, S for sine, T for tan, R. C for cos. Oh, right, yeah. The other one, let's just look at the other one. The other one is uh, tan X is minus 3. Shh. If you do inverse tan of minus 3 on the calculator, you get minus 71.57, according to the calculator. On the diagram then, this time, this, this is where tan is negative. And the bits where tan is negative are the other bits. So it's the C and the S quadrants. So we draw in <coughs> into the C and S bits and mark our angle with the horizontal. And that's the angle that the calculator gave us this time. So we've got 
0.57 there and 71.57 there. And we we now know we've marked it on the on the diagram. We start from the zero line and measure around anticlockwise and see what we come to. So we're going to come to that line there, which is 71.57 before 180. So that's I should have done that in my head. Um, 108.43. Is it negative though? Because it was negative 71. No. It's, we started from the zero line and we went round in the positive direction. Oh, so you don't start from the... We don't start from... We always no. start from that line. We always start from that line, yeah. And then the other one that we come to, if we were to keep going round, then we come to that point there. And that is 71.57 less than 360. So 360 minus 71.57, which comes out as being 288.43. I've ended up. I've ended up with four values. The question did say it didn't give us any specification about how many decimal places. So I'm, I'm going to do it to one. That's probably suitable. It, we need to we need to make sure that all of the answers are at least to three significant figures. And when you're giving answers like this, you see, if we just gave it to three significant figures, it would be a bit inconsistent because that would have one decimal place, and those answers wouldn't, and it, it would just look a little bit wrong. So when you're answering, when you get to the end of these questions, make sure that they're all at least to three significant figures, but then you're consistent in the number of decimal places. I think that's a sensible way to give our answer. Whew. Thanks, Harry. Oh,